Are you ready to move on to Houston? Yeah. So for Houston, my number is four. And that is both the reason that they're going to get at least a first round pick for Eric Gordon at the trade deadline. And also the number of players who have played in at least 20 games and are shooting better than 40% on both catch and shoot and pull up triples while taking more than two threes per game. So the four are Eric Gordon, obviously, Tyrese Halliburton, Desmond Bain, and Devin Booker. And I'm curious if any of those names are surprising to you. They're not because it kind of steps on the toes of a stat I use later on, but I think it's still important. So please don't You're dig welcome. into the supporting cast of this stat too much. Poor Favor. Fair enough. So I'm, I'm going to say that Gordon is taking 2.9 catch and shoot threes per game and hitting 45.9% of them, which is number eight among players taking at least two per game. He's also taking 2.1 pull-up threes per game and hitting 40.8% of them, which is number seven among players taking at least two per game. Houston has largely struggled across the board. Gordon has not. He's been unbelievably good, which is why he's a reasonable fit for basically any team looking for an upgrade at the deadline. He is, I would be shocked if he is still with the Rockets beyond February. And I would be even more shocked if he doesn't bring back at least a first round pick for Houston. Yeah, there's, I've seen trades and I was talking with someone who covers the Rockets and they were, they were asking me about hypothetical trades. And I was just shocked at how little they were willing to accept from him. And I, I would think, you need, and it'll probably be contending teams that go after him. And so I'm thinking in my mind, if it's a bottom seven pick in this year's draft, like you probably need more than a first round pick, probably a first and a second to get him would be my guess. That would be my guess as well. His, his age, injury history, paying him 19 plus million, whatever it is next year, I get the hesitance, but I'm with you where I think it's the barrier for entry for Eric Gordon. If it's less than a first round pick, I will be surprised if they move him for less than that. And we can focus on the shooting too, because- that's where he's excelled so much, but that's by no means the full extent of his game. He can put pressure on the rim. He's a little bit feisty on the defensive end. He can rebound. Like there's a lot that he brings to that proverbial table beyond the shooting. It's just that he has excelled to such an extent that shooting is the easy low hanging fruit to highlight. Right, I'm, not too, I, I'm not too proud to pick the low hanging fruit. He's I think with him too, he's probably having the best passing season of his career. Is that just a, is that an actual improvement or just a matter of volume? I don't know. But your point about the rim pressure that I really just don't think is like gets talked about enough with him is 37% of his shots are coming at the rim this year. That is his highest since 2013, 2014. And among players who play his position, it's the 78th percentile. It's also not out of character when he hasn't been alongside James Harden because they very much had him camping way out because last season he was in the 76th percentile. If you go back to his days, some with the Pelicans slash Hornets when he was with the Clippers, those rim numbers were there. No, he's not like this super explosive athletic guy, but he is like beefy in a good way. He's thick. He is thick and he just gets through and he is fairly quick. So when he's healthy, he's giving you, I would say two levels of scoring, which is really important in someone who, if you want to call him a, a role player, supporting cast member might be the kinder way to put it. So I think Maybe he, I don't know what this trade deadline is going to hold. Not that we ever do, but just with everything that's going on with the league, I don't know if that's going to, so many teams fancy themselves close to the play-in because they are. So is that going to make it harder to spot sellers or is all the, you know, the changing rosters, the revolving door of availability, does that make it less likely teams do whatever? I don't know. But if you're a contender, you need I, and so many of them, by the way. And I guess if offense isn't what you need, but like Dallas is the team that immediately comes to mind. Even if, look, Phoenix can figure out a trade for him. They're so good but they're dead last in the frequency with your shots coming at the rim. They are talented enough to where that doesn't matter, but you look at a playoff setting, some of that kind of hurt them a little bit last year. He can really elevate a team, and I hope we get to see him on a contender or a, a team that's better than the Rockets before the year is over. So like any other team? The Rockets went on that winning streak for a second. <laughs> the Knicks didn't even have like a seven-game winning fair, streak this season. Fair. The other thing about Gordon, and this is purely anecdotal, I don't really have numbers to back this up, but it does feel like he sets up at least a step beyond the three-point arc. And there's value to doing that. I think the best example is like peak Ryan Anderson, where he was so comfortable setting up two feet beyond the arc, that stretches out defenses just a little bit more and makes the gravitational pull that much more impactful. Houston hasn't been able to capitalize on that, but a good team will be able to. And Houston, when they were good, did capitalize on that in the yes. past. The other thing is when you're starting from further out, that's going to give him more room to get that you know, downhill steam if he is attacking the basket. Yep. 